So we're now going to be looking at algebraic fractions. And before we get started with algebraic fractions, I wanted to do a bit of a recap of some things. Actually, how do we do various processes with fractions, OK? So to begin with, when we are adding and subtracting fractions, I want to think about a couple of different types of scenarios that we have. So for example, if I had 3 eighths plus 2 eighths, I know this is incredibly patronizing. I just have the same denominator. So I will obviously, if I have the same denominator, I just deal with the numerator. If I have a question that looked like this, I would obviously need to change the denominator of the first one to make it match the denominator of the second one by multiplying the top and bottom by 2. So I would have 2 eighths plus 3 eighths, which is 5 eighths. It's kind of similar to this one that I'd written at the top here. And then what do you think my last, um, my last example could be that would demonstrate a different kind of uh, calculation that I would need to do or a different kind of fraction question? So I've done one like this, where they had matching denominators, one like this. Can anyone think what my last one might be as a bit of a reminder of how we add or subtract fractions? It could be with algebra. Actually, I'm still wanting to just do one with numbers to start with. Uh, no, it's not going to be a mixed number. It's actually going to be something like this. It's going to be something like 1 third plus 2 sevenths. OK, because in this one here, I only needed to change one of the fractions. In this one here, neither of them can have a matching denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply this one by 7 and this one all here by 3. And you may have seen the short way that people do this, the way that my brain does this, is I think, OK, well, I'll multiply those together to get the denominator, of, the common denominator of 21. I'll multiply those together to get the, um, the first number, which is going to be 7. And I'll multiply those together to get 6. So I get 13 over 21. So the reason I've done these three different ones is because when we do these algebraically, I'm either going to have nice, simple fractions where they have the same denominator, in which case you just add the numerator. So if you had something like a over b plus c over b or minus, it's just going to be a plus or minus c over b. Just keep the denominator the same, obviously. This is very obvious stuff I'm saying here, but I'm just wanting to make sure that we have this so that we've all seen how we go through these fractions. Now, if we have a different kind of fraction, where maybe I have a over b plus or minus, don't mind which one it's going to be, c over d. So clearly here, the denominators are different to each other. Then the pattern that we were doing before is that the denominator would be b multiplied by d. And what would the numerator be? AD plus or minus BC. AD plus or minus BC. And that's just from what we did with the numbers that we have over here. It's just trying to take it from numbers and then put it into algebra that we've got like this. If they have the same denominator, please don't use this more complicated method because it's just going to be unnecessary. And we may not even need to do it to both of them. So that's something that we'll look out for in one of the examples that we'll be doing. If we think we can just change one of the fractions, like here, we changed a quarter to 2 eighths to make them match, then we will do that because it will be a lot of work saved. Okay, It will be a lot of work saved in terms of simplifying in the future. Any questions about these ones that we've just written in the algebraic stuff? No? This, this pattern that we have here, this cross-multiplying for adding and subtracting, Please let me just highlight, this is just for adding and subtracting. Please don't just do this every time you see two fractions near each other. OK, so multiplying fractions, pretty obvious. I'm just going to do it with some numbers. If I have 2 thirds multiplied by 1 fifth, what do we do for multiplying fractions? You just multiply them. So you're going to have 2 divided by 15. I haven't written dividing fractions here because dividing is, is still kind of like a way of multiplying. And so obviously, if I was going to do something like 3 eighths divided by, um, I don't know, 2 thirds. You remember how to do that, that we flip the fraction. So we'll have 3 eighths multiplied by 3 over 2, which is just 9 over 16. A quick point that I would also add here, if I had something like 3 eighths divided by 4, any ways that I could do that without even having to think of like reciprocals and flippings and things like that? 
Could anyone go straight to the answer without even having to think of flipping? Yeah, it's just going to be 3 over 32. If we make the denominator four times bigger, we have actually divided the number by 4. OK? And another example to do with a division, if I had something like 12 over 17 and I wanted to divide that by 4, what's another way that I could do dividing by 4 in this case? Just, I could just divide the numerator by 4. So this one would just be 3 over 17. These are things that we've probably been using, but I thought it was useful just to kind of put these in one place, OK? So if you want to divide by 4, you can either make the, new, the denominator 4 times bigger, or if you can divide the numerator, dividing the numerator will also scale the number in the correct kind of way as well. So for multiplying fractions, you come up with things like if you had a over b multiplied by c over d, we obviously just get ac over bd. If we had a multiplying fraction question that was like this, where we had a over b multiplied by b over c, when we are multiplying fractions, what can we do here? We can what, sorry? We can just multiply them so you'd get AB over BC, but the best thing to do in this case is to cancel out the Bs before we even do the multiplying. And just to clarify why that happens, this may seem obvious to some of you, but some of you may not have thought about this before. You're multiplying a number by B, and then you're dividing the same number by B. So if you're multiplying and dividing by the same thing, they are inverses, so that's why they actually cancel out. And then I've put a little section over here of some illegal moves. Oh, I didn't actually finish this, so this is just A over C when it cancels. And I've put some illegal moves in here. These are things that you cannot do and that people do do, and I want to try and show you why these things cannot be done. So if I had a fraction like uh, AC plus AB uh, divided by B, Something that I have seen people do in the past is that they would say, oh, great, well, I can just cancel the Bs out that I've got here. I could actually just cancel this B with this B here. So it is just equal to AC plus A. But that is completely illegal to do that. Why is that not possible? Why can I not do that? Because the AC is also being divided by B. So you can only do this cancelling when everything is being multiplied. So in this case, this is illegal. This does not equal this because there is no B here for me to cancel it with. And you could just try that out with some numbers. Like if I said 3 times 2 plus 3 times 4 divided by 4, well, this is clearly equal to... 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, so that's 18 over 4, or 19 over 2. But if I did the illegal move of the cancelling of the 4s, I've got 6 plus 3, which is just 9. So it's clearly not, it's clearly not the correct answer. So 19 over 2 is because 6 plus 12, oh, 19 over 2, well, that's crazy, isn't it? Completely crazy. Should have just been 9, nine over 2. But you can see how if you did cancel the 4s, you get something that makes no sense. You would say, oh, great, you get 6 plus 3, which is 9, but actually the real answer is 9 over 2. So that's why the cancelling doesn't work. If you ever think you want to do some cancelling, try the same thing with some numbers and actually see if it does give you the correct kind of thing. So I never want to see this kind of illegal cancelling happening here unless we've got everything being multiplied by it, OK? So... If we can know these ideas from, well, not even GCSE, like adding and subtracting fractions, probably year seven, maybe even year six, then we should be able to do some of these trickier questions that are now just going to be algebraic. So the first part of this topic, we're going to be doing just algebraic fractions. And when I next see you for a lesson, we're going to be working on something called partial fractions. Now, this topic here is not a standalone topic. This is a skills-based topic. This is like giving you something new, like factorizing or expanding. It's a new skill that will help us to access more maths. It is not like a topic by itself, really. It's like a, a new tool to add to the box. So we're going to try and take this fraction that I've got here, and we're going to try and express this as a single fraction in its simplest form. So right now, this is two separate fractions, but I want it to be a single fraction that we have here. 
Are there any suggested starting points that we should do to try and combine these fractions? Nabil? Refer to your expert Good. Whenever we have something like this, we probably are going to want to try and factorise this so that we can make the addition or the subtraction as efficient as possible. Because it may be like one of these questions that I have here, where I don't need to change both of the fractions, where I might only need to change one of the fractions. Like this one where I had a quarter, I needed to change it to two eighths. So it might be one of those kinds of questions. And you know what? If there's a question like this in a, an assessment, it is going to be one of those questions. So let's actually simplify this. If we have the first one, we've got 3x plus 5. What does the um, denominator factorise to? X minus 3 and x plus 3. X minus 3, x plus 4. Now, there's a really high-speed way that I knew it was going to be that, other than just the normal factorising techniques. Why do you think I, was, I knew 100% x minus 3 was going to be one of them? because it features in the other one, OK? So the, we know how they write questions. We know they want you to lead you down a particular path. So if you're struggling factorizing, particularly when we go to some of the trickier ones, there's always going to be a clue somewhere in the question. So be sensible of how you do that. And we're going to minus 2 over x minus 3. So they almost have the same denominator, but they don't have the same denominator just yet. What do I need to do to the second fraction? I need to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 4. So I'm just going to add in an x plus 4 on the top, and I'm going to add in an x plus 4 on the bottom. And now that we've got them to this stage here, they have a common denominator, and so I'm actually able to combine them together. But I'm going to show you a mistake that people often make when they do this. So first of all, I would write down the denominator, x minus 3, x plus 4. The mistake I see a lot of people make is... Actually, I guess it's not quite as obvious in this bit, but if this bracket was expanded, if this said 2x plus 8, what do you think people often might make as the mistake when there's a subtraction here? Minus 2x plus minus they might just write minus 2x plus 8, but actually what's happening here is you're subtracting the whole of the, the denominator. So if you ever had some, that kind of expression, you would need to bracket it like that. So I'm actually going to not put the 2x and 8 there. I'm going to leave it with the 2 and the x plus 4. So I'm going to subtract 2x plus 4 that we've got like this. I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to simplify this. So that is 3x plus 5 minus 2x minus 8. Careful with the negative there. And that's all being divided by x minus 3x plus 4. And so the numerator simplifies to... So we have x minus 3 over x minus 3, x plus 4. Am I allowed to cancel, or is this illegal? Yes. I'm allowed to cancel, because if I put a bracket around that, I can divide the top and bottom by x minus 3. And when I cancel that, it doesn't go to 0. It actually is replaced with a 1, OK? So the actual answer to this question is it is just 1 over x plus 4. And I don't need the brackets there if I don't want them. So it's just 1 over x plus 4. They love to give you this as part A of the question. They might say this is what f of x is equal to. And then part B of the question might be find the inverse of f of x. And so instead of doing any of the calculations to this, you would just treat this as what f of x is. Do everything using the function that you've just simplified it to. Find the inverse function, differentiate it, integrate it, all of the things that we do. So they love this as a part A. And then part B, they won't tell you what it is, but they'll want you to start using that thing that we've got there. So we're going to just try this one before the bell goes. We're going to express this as a single fraction, giving your answer in its simplest form. So looks like we're going to need to do the same thing as before by trying to do something to this quadratic denominator that I've got here. So what does that factorize to? Anyone think they can tell me very quickly what it factorizes to? It's going to be a 3x plus 1 and an x plus 1. There are two reasons that I knew that. What were the reasons why you knew it was going to look like that? There's an x plus 1 over here. And when there's a plus 1 and you're trying to factorize something, it's the best one that you can have because it limits your options. Okay, It limits all the different things you can have. You know they're going to both have to have a 1 at the end. And we're going to subtract 3x plus 1 here. So I'm going to multiply this second fraction by 3x plus 1 on the numerator and the denominator. And then I'm going to combine them. So that's 10x plus 4 minus 3, 3x plus 1, all over 
3x plus 1, x plus 1. Keep simplifying. That's 10x plus 4, minus 9x minus 3, all over 3x plus 1, x plus 1. The numerator then just gives you x plus 1. And so when I cancel these by dividing the top and bottom by x plus 1, I end up with, very similar to the previous question, 1 over 3x plus 1. Okay? So the exercises I'm going to ask you to complete for homework are going to be exercise 1b and 1c. Now, exercise 1b, if I recall this correctly, is all about multiplying and dividing fractions. So there's going to be lots of things there to do with cancelling. I haven't done many examples on that because I think it's going to be mostly stuff you're pretty familiar with. Okay, This is for exercise 1b. And then exercise 1c is addition and subtraction of fractions. And I want you to follow these kind of ones that we've got here. So it's going to be quite a lot of practice, but I think you're actually going to really enjoy these because actually if you're doing maths A-level, you probably quite enjoy doing algebraic manipulation. So um, these will be due in for our next lesson. Okay, And I'll give you the, the worksheets and um, the bits you need now. Okay.